Hey again, and welcome back. The steady stream of envelopes from China has slowed to a trickle. So I ordered some more, but for now we have these five, so it's time for another mailbag. First one up is this one here. It says one times USB cable. I actually don't remember ordering any USB cables, but that's quite all right. Looks like it's from uh, Phone Fix. Oh, all right. I remember these guys, but it is not a USB cable. Let's take a closer look. So these things are not USB cables at all, as you might be able to tell, but they are actually spudgers. They're actually used to uh, pry and get into things. So they have a uh, extremely sharp end here. Actually, it's like really, really sharp. It's also um, like a taper, so it comes down to a very fine point. On the other side, looks like we have, oh, like stab myself with that. On the other side, looks like we have this little hook here. And again, a little prying surface. And they're fairly bendable. So I think they'll be good for getting into things. Um, I've only really been using screwdrivers and the like to get into stuff, so I figured I would get some of these. Um, these cost me, I think there's 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, yeah, 10 and they were 2 bucks Canadian for the whole lot. So uh, that's, uh, that's pretty cheap and I figure if I ruin them, well, not that big of a deal, right? But yeah, nothing too much to see here, I don't think I have anything to pry apart per se, just looking around me here. Um, I have a um, drive bay, but the drive bay, you know, just open it like that. Yeah, I don't think I have anything to pry open, but when I do, I guess we're gonna see these things in action. Next one up, this package. Now this thing is actually fairly heavy and uh, pretty small, and it says wire crimper jaw. So I'm pretty sure I know exactly what this is. And to nobody's surprise, it looks like a wire crimper jaw. Let's take a closer look. So a while ago I bought these um, crimpers and I was doing something stupid. I was crimping cable way too big on a terminal that doesn't even fit really. And uh, I broke one of the lugs here. See one, two, three, there's missing a tooth right there. So this was actually very expensive. It was uh, $6. So if you figure this is about 12 bucks, this is about six bucks. And uh, yeah, I just had to order a replacement. Hopefully they fit. They seem generic, but it's hard to tell. Oh, great. And my Allen key is not the right size. Hang on, gonna go look for an Allen wrench. Okay, got one. This is actually one of my good ones. I have a few for uh, my RC cars, but they're kind of scattered everywhere. Oops, I guess I should release this. So yeah, I did something stupid and I broke it. So I needed to buy a new one. Hopefully they're identical. Let's see. Sure looks like it. Seems about right to me. Good. Well, that'll show me. There's some numbers in here. Interesting. Don't know if you can see that. Okay, well that's fixed. Um, maybe I'll put the, this new one on anyway and keep the uh, broken set as a pair together. Serves me right for doing stupid shit with cheap tools. Get out of there. go set this back in yeah seems good to me I can sacrifice a connector 
to see if it works. So here I got a bunch of connectors from work. They send us these with uh, Rust modules. And although I hate installing Rust modules because they're a scam, uh, in case you didn't know that, the uh, anti-corrosion modules, I'm not going to say a scam, but pretty scammy. How about that? So I think it goes into this one. Looks about right. Let's see. Yep. Crimp's just fine. Awesome. So um, let's move on. Next one up is this one. Uh, this one says screwdriver. I don't think so. It's definitely something metal, but it's flat. Whatever it is. Okay, well, <laughs> let's go take a closer look at this. So what this is, is another prying tool. This one's made of metal. I guess a spudger, you'd want to call it. This is like, this end is extremely sharp. And uh, this thing cost me a dollar. So pretty cheap, but like really rigid. It's really nice. It's got a little bit of an angle up. You can see here, a little bit angled that way. It's not super long, it's not super short. But yeah, I guess this will be useful for opening things. I guess I got tired of struggling with screwdrivers, so I bought a bunch of these. So yeah, one dollar. Let's hope it comes in handy. Next one up is this one. It says probe. Uh, FA055 times three. I hope it's not another spudger, because or else uh, this is going to be a pretty boring video for you guys. Aha! They are indeed probes. And what these things are, they are... Well, that doesn't work. Here, I'll just cut it. They are extremely sharp needles. At least they should be. I'm, uh, I haven't tried them yet, obviously. So they're extremely sharp needles that take a... I think it's a 4mm banana plug on this side. We can actually test that because I have some banana plugs in my connector case here. Uh, four millimeter. These guys. Yeah, four millimeter banana plugs. At least I think there's metal down there. I hope so. Uh, and they are supposed to be razor sharp needles, Oh, which they are. I can tell these are extremely sharp um, and what the point of this is is to get into the backside of wiring harnesses for vehicles so if you can just imagine that um, let's say this here would be your wire harness right you'd have the pins in there and then you should be able to go onto the back here and go inside the weatherproofing like just wriggle your way into the weatherproofing to kind of poke at the wires in there to do your testing. So I got three sets here. Let me just check how much I paid for this. It was uh, six dollars, so they were uh, one buck a piece, but I think it was one of those deals where if you spend five dollars US on, um, on uh, eBay, they would give you Five, like if you spent over five dollars they would give you a five dollar rebate so I'm pretty sure that's how I got these I'm always looking for little stuff to order in that in those cases and this thing is kind of indispensable you really want these in your garage if you're gonna do any electrical diag and electrical diagnostics are like that's my jam that's the stuff I love to do so yeah I bought these they're extremely sharp. I hope they hold together. It says 30 volts on it, but I don't see any reason why you couldn't probe, you know, 40 volts or whatever. It's not really insulated, so a high current supply like a hybrid battery probably wouldn't be a good idea, but most of the circuits we look at on automotive are 12 volt low amperage up until you get up to alternators at around 90 amps and up starter motors at 150 amps and up and so on and so on but you wouldn't be back probing with these so 
yeah, looks pretty nice. The only complaint I have is with a standard sort of uh, probe, you don't actually get it to stay in. So your multimeter has kind of like these probes on it. And at least the ones I, I use at the college, yeah, no. It doesn't thread or anything, doesn't stay in. You really need a uh, banana jack, like four mil banana jack to banana jack. And you put the, if you didn't know that, most multimeters have a four mil banana jack um, uh, hole in, in them. And so you put that four mil banana jack on one end and on the other, you have another banana jack. You know, we get these things, these banana jacks. So you would have one that goes in your multimeter and one that goes into this probe, and then you can go back probe. But yeah, if you don't make your own multimeter leads, you're really missing out because it's very inexpensive when you think like this is a few cents, a few cents of wire and whatever the heck you want on the other end. But yeah, let's move on. Last but not least, we have this one. And I think I know what this is. I'm pretty sure this is a camera battery that I won at an auction for a buck sixty Canadian. So like maybe a buck thirty, a buck twenty American. And uh, I was astounded I actually won that auction. There was a lot of time left on the auction when I won it. I'm pretty sure that's what this is. It's hard to say because on the label it says it's a charger. Uh, it's definitely not a charger. Well, if it's the item I actually won, it's not a charger. So we shall see. But uh, for a buck sixty-eight, kind of whatever's in here is uh, going to be interesting. A difficult package to open though. Just cutting through the tab instead of untaping it. So it says rechargeable battery for digital camera and camcorder. And it sure is. It is a Canon. LP E10 or a replacement for a Canon LP E10 lithium battery. Let's take a closer look. I am not 100% sure what I'm going to do with this, but uh, I know it should be interesting nonetheless. So, yeah, the terminals are marked plus minus. I'll have to figure out how the charger actually works to charge this thing. I wonder if it's a protected cell. Let, you know what? First things first. So I'm going to pull out the multimeter, with the multimeter leads, like this, slap it into DC volts, and this thing has a nominal voltage of 7.2 volts, meaning it's a 2 cell, meaning if it's anywhere below, uh, let's see, below 6 volts, I will be concerned about its health. So, I don't know, can you see a little bit? Let me just prop this up for you. Uh, nope, now you're solidly in the reflection of my other light. Okay, whatever. All right, so to the negative, and I think the positive is this uh, terminal beside it there. Ooh, 7.73 volts. So I'm not sure if I just give this a constant voltage of uh, about eight volts, if it'll charge by itself with a chip on the on board or if it's reliant on the charger develop uh, delivering the exact amount of voltage that it needs so I think it's time to give this thing a test and see if we can break in because this is awfully convenient but I can only see the two halves here there's a heck of a burr on this well I give it a shot here if this all goes wrong, well, oh well, right? At least I have it on video. It's opening. I am winning. Ooh, that's a scary. It's scary because the lipo, 
lithium polymer battery is right in there. I thought this was going to be clipped together, but it is glued. Oh, maybe it's clipped also. Trying my best not to damage the pouch cell in there. Oh man. Oh, it's not a pouch cell. Okay, they are metal cased like these these metal case cells that's what you find inside the uh, single cell um, cell phone like those old Nokia type batteries and there's some double-sided tape here don't know what that says there China Okay, so it says roofer <laughs> and a bunch of numbers. I don't know if you can see that. This is double-sided tape here with a label. And there's a little bit of foam tape in between and that's all. I see some chips on the back side of this. So I'm assuming that it is protected I still don't know if it's charged intelligently. Well, I opened it, but it, tell, it told me absolutely nothing. I have the um, markings here. P minus, P plus, TH, thermal maybe, like a thermistor. And uh, ID, I guess that's for the camera to identify what it is. So, interesting. And this goes back in there, and this goes back in like this, I believe. And then literally the two-sided tape will keep it together. Well, I'm not sure what to do with this yet, but I know it's going to play a part in something. We might do some um, charge testing, some load testing, see how much current we can pull out of this. But yeah, little uh, lithium-ion battery is pretty interesting to have around. And this concise little pile of stuff makes up today's mailbag. So if you like these kinds of videos and would like early access to them, also if you'd like to support the channel, you can join my Patreon. The uh, link is in the description below. Other than that, if you want to support the channel, just watch it. Show it to your friends. Tell everyone about it. But once again, thanks for watching.